Secondly, I have my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev and to Srila Prabhupada and to all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Param. And finally, I have my pranam to Ananya Chitandi Padagan, all the sannyasis and all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. By the Kosas mercy of Sri Gura and Goranga, we continue to observe, to celebrate the divine Tirubhav disappearance day of Srila Sanatan Goswami. The Brajabasis, they used to call him Bada Baba, the most, the most senior Baba in the Raja. All honor him, all respect him. Even Srila Rupa Goswami Pad calls him Prabhupada. So today we heard how he left his position as the Prime Minister 
in the empire of Goda, of the emperor Nawab Hussein Shah. Chakto Arturna Mashesha Mandala Pati Sri Nimsada Tushtavat Bhutva Dina Ganesh Kokranyo Kaupena Kanta Sito Gopi Bhava Rasamrita Abdila Hari Kalola Magno Mahu Vande Ru Prasanatano Rabu Yugao Sri Jeeva Gopal Ko Srinivas Acharya is glorifying our Goswamis Chakto Arturna Mashesha Mandala Pati all the people of this world, they want wealth, money, fame, power. Srila Sanatana Goswami, he had everything. But he left it like a piece of straw, completely worthless. Leaving his comfortable palace and royal clothing, wearing only torn cloth, rags, no money. Sleeping under a tree, different tree every night. Why did he do this? Gopi Bhava Rasamrita Dilari Kalola Bhagnomo. Because in his heart he was diving again and again in the towering waves of the frame of the Gopis of Vrindavan. Hmm? Therefore, everything that this world has to offer was irrelevant and insignificant. Hmm? But what is our condition? Uh, yes, 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 this eternal ocean of nectar, it can wait. Huh? Later. Now I uh, enjoy the material world. So we need mercy of our Guru Dev, our Acharya Srila Sanatana Goswami to realize one drop of what they are realizing. So Srila Sanatana Goswami, but when he escaped from the jail, he was traveling north and going through Bihar. So everyone knows that though Bihar is in the east, but it's like the wild west. Many, many dacoits live in the mountains there and they rob the people. So now Srila Sanatana Goswami Party had to pass through some mountains that were famous for being a death trap for, for travelers. So just as he was approaching that place, he came to an inn. And the owner of the inn received him with great hospitality with so much love and affection please stay here this is your home whatever you want just ask us hmm? <laughs> so you know there's a saying in india ati bhakti chura lakshan too much devotion is a sign of a thief. Mm -hmm. Someone comes to the temple, bowing down to everyone, humble like this, then you can think, oh, what does this person want? Maybe they're looking to see if the donation box is chained to the ground or not. So Sanatana Goswami Pad saw that this innkeeper, he was showing too much hospitality. So then he had an idea. Sanatana Goswami went to his servant, Isha, and said, Do you have any valuables with you? Isha, he admitted, Yes. What have you got? Ishan said, I have seven gold coins. Because I am your servant, I was concerned about you. I thought I should bring something. Perhaps we would need it. So then, Sanatana Goswami said, give me the coins. So he gave him the seven gold coins and he went to the keeper of the inn and put it in front of him. There, please take this and help us cross these mountains. The innkeeper was so happy. He said, 
You are very merciful to me because you have saved me from a terrible path, from great sin. I have an astrologer and he had calculated that guests were coming and they had eight gold coins. <laughs> And I was arranging for my men to come and kill you in the night and take your money. But now by just giving me this, you have saved me from this. So then, because Sila Sanatana Goswami Pad, he's a very influential person now, just by his presence, people's hearts are changed. So that innkeeper said, look, you can keep the money. Sila Sanatana Goswami Pad gave, he said, no, no, you keep it. If you don't kill me for it, someone else will. So you take it. But also, he knew something else. What is that? Avyavastita chittasya prasado pi bayankara. There's a famous Subhasita saying in Sanskrit that Avyavastita chittasya if a person has a restless or unsteady mind, then you cannot trust them. Prasado pi bayankara, even if they're kind to you, their kindness is terrifying. Hmm? Generally, if someone is very kind to us, you know, oh, this person is so qualified and intelligent because he has recognized my greatness. <laughs> we become intoxicated by the flattery of others. Sri Sanatana Goswami Pad isn't like this. Those who are non-devotees, whose minds are not steel, steep the party are fixed. <laughs> They can change their tune at any second. One day they are your friend and the next day they can go against you. You cannot trust them. So even if they show you kindness, they give you money, they give you facility, they give you, don't take it. It's all contaminated. Only buyer is drawing you into an entangling situation. Remain aloof. It's okay, you can keep it. But just help us cross the mountains. So then the, the, they stayed there that night and then his men helped them cross the mountains. And then they went back. Then Sanatana Goswami Park came to Isha. He said, you kept one coin. Give it to me. So then, so yes, it was confirmed. So, all right, you can keep this coin but return to Bengal. Don't travel with me anymore. Why? Asat Sangha. He is not surrendered to Krishna. Krishna said, Ananyas chintayam tumam yejana paryapasati tisham nitya vyuktanam yoga kshema vahamya. If someone is surrendered to me, thinking of me continuously, at every moment absorbed in loving service to me, then whatever they need, I carry it myself. And whatever they have, I preserve it. So see, Krishna takes care of his devotees. The devotees don't have to take shelter of material things. Well, the money and materialistic association. So, he gave him the coin and told him, I am traveling alone now. So then Sri Lasanatana Goswami continued on his journey until he came to the village of Hajipur. And there, he met with his brother-in-law, was working there. And uh, he was very wealthy. And his brother-in-law invited him. Oh, please stay. S stay with me. But he didn't accept. And his brother-in-law gave him a blanket. At least accept this. And he gave him a very colorful, expensive blanket made from the Bhutanese wool. Wool from Bhutan. So it was very opulent. Chadha. 
So Sunan Goswami put it on and then he continued and gradually, gradually he came to Varanasi. There in Varanasi in Banaras, he sat down outside one house and by the arrangement of the Lord, it was the house of Chandrasekhar. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was staying there. He had already been in Vrindavan and he was on his way back to Puri as Sanatana Goswami because he told Sanatana Goswami meet me in Vrindavan. But Mahaprabhu had already gone and he was on his way back because Sanatana Goswami was delayed while he was in prison. So Mahaprabhu happened to be in that house. And because Mahaprabhu is omniscient, he knows everything. He said, Oh Chandrasekhar, go outside, there's a sadhu there and bring him in. So then Chandrasekhar went outside and he looked around, couldn't see a sadhu, he saw one Muslim mendicant with a beard and a boot in his blanket. He came back in, he said, no, no, there's no sadhus out there. But there's, there's some Muslim mendicant. Mahaprabhu said, ah, that's him. And he went up and went outside and saw Sanatana Goswami part there and embraced him. Sanatana Goswami part very humbly. No, don't touch me. I am very contaminated. Mahaprabhu invited him and he told Chandrasekhar, make him gentle. That means shave off his beard. So he was bathed and shaved. There, Mahaprabhu instructed Srila Sanatana Goswami. Banaras is a place of Sanatana Shiksha. One day, Mahaprabhu and Sanatana were sitting down and Mahaprabhu could know, was glancing again and again. And Sanatana Goswami could feel that he's looking at my chatter. So then Sanat Goswami gave Pranami, got up and he went away. He went to the bank of the Ganges. And there was one old sadhu in torn rags sitting on the bank of the Ganga. Sanat Goswami said, Oh brother, please give me your torn chadar and I'll give you this one. And that old person said, Oh, why are you mocking me? He said, No, no, really, for real. And so then they swapped and he gave the expensive blanket to that sadhu and took his worn blanket to put it on and went back and sat down with Mahaprabhu. Then Mahaprabhu was very happy. He said, Krishna is very merciful. When he extracts one, from the entanglement of the material world. He will not tolerate if there's still some trace of attachment left. So he's a very good doctor. Just as a doctor will give a treatment to help you overcome your disease. But if there's any bad habit that will make you relapse, then the doctor will forbid that. So in the same way, Krishna's mercy is like that. Now you have you had left everything, but you are maintaining one comfort, some nice cloth, and now you have given up that. So Mahaprabhu was very satisfied. Chaitanya Bhaktagan Vairagya Pradhan Yahadeki Pritahaya Gaura Bhagavan. It is said that one quality is prominent among the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What is that? Vairagya. Dispassion. Detachment from the objects of the senses. From the so-called pleasures of the physical world. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sees the detachment of his devotees, then he is very, very pleased. Because Vishai, the sense objects, is Vish, poison. 
when your consciousness touches the objects of the senses, they're all tamasic. The physical world, the gross elements are the transformation of tamasic ahankar. So it is like you're injecting your chitta with tamagun. You're giving yourself an injection into the consciousness of the mode of ignorance. And with that darkened consciousness, we cannot realize anything. If we want to realize, see Krishna first, Chaito Darpana Marjanam, the chitta should be cleansed of tamas and cleansed of rajas, and become very highly subtle. And then it can catch the reflection of the beautiful swarupa of Sri Krishna. Anubhuti realization. So then, one day, Mahaprabhu, he sat at the place called Manikarnikaraghat. And Sanatana Goswami approached him. He said, Nicha jati, nicha sangi, patita adham, ku vishayi kupi pare goenu jana, apanar hita hita kichoina jani, gramya vyavahara pandit, tai satyamani. Sanatana Goswami Pad said, I am of a very low caste. In fact, out of out of caste, lower than the Malachas and Yavans. Nicha Sangi, I have very low, abominable association in my life. Potita Adam, and out of all of the low and despicable persons I have associated with, actually I am the worst. I am the most fallen. Ku Vishai Kupi Pade Goinu Janam. Oh Mahaprabhu, I have wasted my life in the deep well of the stool of sense gratification, in the pit of sense gratification. This is his anutta, regret, his repentance, his remorse. This is a the qualification to begin spiritual life. Unless one feels remorse, regret, then there's no spiritual life. You cannot just march on the path of spiritual life. Hi people, I'm here. Hmm? I have so many good qualities. Hmm? This is not going to work. Hmm? Recognizing one's fallen condition, then the mercy of Sri Krishna comes. Krishna gives more mercy to those who are they recognize their insignificance. So he said to Ma Mahaprabhu, I don't know what is beneficial for me in my life, and I don't know what is detrimental for my life. I have no clue. But Gramya Vyavahara Pandit Tai Satyamani, the common people, they call me a pandit, they think that I'm very learned. And I am so foolish that listening to their praise, I also think I'm a pandit. This is my position. But what kind of learned person am I? Am I? Ke ami, kene amai jani tapatrai, hiya nahi jani kemoni hitahai. He said, Oh Mahapu, ke ami, who am I? You would expect a learned person. At least they would know their own name and address. But do you know your name and address? Hmm? What is your name of your soul? Hmm? Your address. We are like refugees in this world. Life kicked out of one body, kicked out of another body, kicked out of another body, taking birth here and there, with no fixed abode. What is our home? So he said, who am I? Can am I Jari Tapatra? And why am I suffering? If I don't know this, how can there be any auspiciousness for me? Then he said, Saat yo saat nina tatkwa puchite na jani. Kripa kari saba tatkwa koheta abani. Oh my Lord. In regard to the goal of life and the process to attain the goal of life, I don't even know how to ask the right questions. So you be very kind and merciful to me. And by your mercy, you explain 
whatever I need to know, whatever I am qualified to understand, please mercifully explain that. So, here Sanatana Swami Pad is asking four questions. First, who am I? Second, why am I suffering? Then, the two essential questions. What's my sadhya and my sadhana? What's the goal of life and the method to attain it? So, although he said, I don't know how to ask questions, he is most expertly asked the most pertinent and relevant questions. So Mahaprabhu began to instruct him. To the question, who am I? What did Mahaprabhu say? Jivaya Swarupahoy Krishna Nityadas Krishna Rachatastha Shakti Veda Vedpakas The nature, the true nature of the Jiva, the soul, that's who you are, you are the soul, is to be Krishna Das, the servant of Krishna. You are not of the spiritual world or of the material world. But the Jiva is a manifestation, Krishna Tatasta Shakti, of Krishna's marginal potency. Veda Ved Prakash, which is inconceivably one with Krishna and also different from him. In answer to, why are you suffering? What did Mahaprabhu say? Krishna Bholi Sejiv Anadir Bahimuk Atayeva Mayatari De Sangsaradu the living entity, only because he has forgotten Krishna, he has turned his face away. Bahirmuk, there's Krishna, but the Jiva has turned his face away. Atayeva Maya Tari Dhyas Sangsaraduk. And this is why Maya, the external material energy, is inflicting the miseries of the samsara, repeated births and deaths upon the living entity. So people recognize, yes, I have problems in my life. And they're trying to solve one problem, another problem, another problem. But this is useless. Because behind that problem is another one and another, like waves in the ocean. Coming with no end. So we have to understand the root cause of all problems. And that is only one thing. Krishna Bhuli. Forgetfulness of Krishna. Anadir Bahimuk. That we are indifferent to Krishna's loving service. This is the only problem. And if we can solve this problem, all problems are solved forever. So, what is the sadhana? Mahaprabhu explained Bayam Dutti Abhid Vijista Shati Shari Pitasya Vipariyoti Smithi that oh, because the living entity has turned away from Krishna, so he is suffering. But this can be solved. How? By Bhaktiani Kayesham Guru Deva Tattva. If the living entity will accept a Sadhguru, a bona fide Guru, to be more dear to him than his own soul. Oh Gurudev, you are my Atma, you are my Supreme Lord. Because Guru is a manifestation of Krishna who has come to deliver us from this world. If someone will serve the spiritual master in that way, then they will come out from life. So Srila Sanatana Goswami Pad was listening. For several days, Mahaprabhu explained all about Sambandha, Avideya and Prayojana. Our relationship with Krishna, the process of bhakti, and the goal of life. And especially he described how Krishna in Vrindavan plays upon his flute and steals the heart of Radhika and Braja Gopis. How their love, the frame of Braja Gopis is the highest goal of life. And in the end, Mapu explained the verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. Atmaramas chamune yo nirgranta apyurukrame karvanta hoite kim bhaktim itumbhut guno hari. That even self satisfied mukta mahapurush liberated souls who have realized Brahman, they don't need anything, they are liberated from this world. But even they 
engage in loving service to Sri Krishna. Because Krishna has such beautiful, astonishing qualities. So, among the Mahaprabhu explained 61 different meanings of this verse. And we just gave class on this in the, our Moscow festival, so you can watch that online. The 61 meanings of this Atmaram. But among these teachings, there's something I want to say, very important. Some people think that without the Siddha Deha, unless someone will tell me, oh, my spiritual name and spiritual form and services and cloth and dress and age and complexion and everything. I cannot begin Raghunuga Bhakti. So this is quite against the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There you will see Mahaprabhu has said to Sanatan Goswami that Bhakti Swabhavoe Brahma Hoite Akashan Divya Deya Divya Karei Krishna Bhajan Bhakti Swabhav, it's the very nature of Bhakti. That Divya Deya Deya, that the power of Bhakti gives you a spiritual body in which you serve the lotus feet of Krishna. And Mahaprabhu also said, Bhakta Bale Prapta Swarup Divya Deya Pai Krishna Gona Krishna Hai Mbaje Krishna Pai Bhakti Bali, by the power of Bhakti, Prapta Swarup Divya Deya Pai, one attains his Swarup, his transcendental body. And then in that transcendental body, all his senses are intensely attracted to the beauty of Krishna. And he serves in turn the Sri Krishna's lotus feet. So, the Siddha Deya, the Siddha Rup, comes by the power of Bhajan. And when it starts to appear, then at that time, a devotee can go to his Bhajan Shiksha Guru and reveal his heart. And the Bhajan Shiksha Guru may refine the conception. He can confirm, yes, oh, I have some inspiration. This is my name. Because I heard Rupa Manjari calling me and asking, here's a chamber, can you find it? Yeah. In Bhajan, he heard it. Yeah. Yes, yes, this is your name. Only confirm. This is your seva. Hmm? And if something is not fully clear, he may refine that. So no one can give you your swarup. Sila Bhakti Sanswar Thakur said that trying to force feed a swarup onto an anatta grasta or a conditioned soul is not the sign of perfection or understanding of Bhakti Tattva. But such realization comes to that person whose heart is intensely hankering for the service of Radha and Krishna after chanting lakhs and lakhs of Harinam. Mm -hmm. So Mahaprabhu has explained this uh, in these uh, teachings to Sanatan Goswami. So after hearing these teachings, Mahaprabhu told Sanatan Goswami to uh, continue to Vrindavan. And Mahaprabhu continued to Jagannath Puri. He told Sanatan Goswami go to Vrindavan do Parakrama of the Twelve Forests and then come and meet me in Puri. So Sanatana Goswami went to Braja. He met with Subuddhi Roy and the son of the Brahman who had taken Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on the, on the Parakrama of the Twelve Forests. And he did Parakrama of all the holy places. And then he set out for Puri. And he went to Puri on the same path through the Jarikhanda forests that Mahaprabhu had come. So traveling in the jungle, there's no facility there. And when he was traveling, he drank some contaminated water. And because of drinking this water with bacteria in, he got scabies and he had sores. His body broke out in sores. Red blood scabs were there and pus was oozing from them. It was very painful and disgusting. <laughs> and anyway, with this disease, Sanatana Goswami Path arrived in Jagannath Puri. So when he was there, he went to Siddha Bukul. 
and he stayed with Srila Haridas Thakur. Because Srila Haridas Thakur was from a Muslim background, and Sanatana Goswami, because he was Sakar Malik, Sakar Malik before the Prime Minister in the Muslim Empire, he considered himself an outcast, so he stayed with the other outcasts. <laughs> Once I was in Siddhapakul with my Gurudev and we sat down beneath the tree and Gurudev said, this is our place. <laughs> this is our place. Why? Because when also Rupa Goswami, when Rupa Goswami would come to Puri, Sanatana Goswami would come to Puri, this is where they would stay. And he said, and especially you, you Westerners. Because you are not allowed to go into the temple of Lord Jagannath. So Haridas Thakur could not go in. Though Sanatana Goswami was born into a very high caste, <coughs> Saraswat Brahmins from Karnatak, that line. Hmm? But he considered himself an outcast. So he also, out of humility, he did not go uh, even near the door, the gate, the Singhadwara of the Jagannath temple. So Buddha said, so you are all the rejects, so you can stay here with the other rejects. You are in good company, Haridas Thakur, Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami. So though Haridas Thakur could not go in the Jagannath temple, Jagannath himself, in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, used to come every day to see him. So Mahaprabhu arrived there and he saw Sanatana Goswami. Sanatana Goswami bowed down to him. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced him. And when he embraced him, then the blood and the pus from his wounds was smeared on the soft golden body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Sanatana Goswami was horrified. He thought, alas, alas, this is terrible. I am making an offense that these disgusting fluids from my body are touching the transcendental form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I should not stay alive, I am so sinful. And he was thinking in his mind, soon the Ratiyatra festival will come and it will be better for me, beholding the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing in front of Lord Jagannath, if I will dive underneath the wheels of the chariot and crunch and be finished, give up my life there. This would be better for me. He was just thinking this. Just thinking. I should give up my life. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's omniscient. He could understand the heart of Sanatana Goswami. He said, Hey Haridas, this Sanatana does not even know the basic principles of Dharma. The basic principle of Dharma is, you cannot destroy someone else's property. Hmm? Hey Sanatan, if I could attain Krishna Prem by committing suicide, then I would give up my body a million times every day without a second thought. But Krishna Prem cannot be attained by suicide. Suicide is tamasic. It is true that the pure devotees who have love for Krishna, if they are in separation from Krishna, then they want to die. And Mahaprabhu taught Sanatana Goswami a verse. Sinjangana stwadadaram vrtapura kena Asavaloga kalagita charich chayagnam No chedvayam virajadupayukta deha Dhyanena yama padayo padavim sakete Who has spoken this verse? Shimati Radhika. On the full moon night, in the month of the Sharad season, Sri Krishna played his flute at Pankshivat in the forest, and Braj Gopis abandoned everything and ran to meet him. But when they arrived there, Sri Krishna, he is very, very tricky. 
And in order to make them reveal the love that they were hiding inside, he spoke very cruel words. Swagatamba Mahabhaga Priyamkim Karvamiva Raja Sangamayanka Chit Bruta Gamanakarana Ho Terrible words. Samutu Chai Lanka. Nature is agreeing. Welcome to the forest. Why did you come here? Is there a problem in, in the village? You can tell me. Did you come to see the beauty of the forest? All right, now you've seen it, go home. Because I'm a brahmachari. Brahmachari should never stay in a place with beautiful young women like you. So go back. So Krishna spoke very cruel words. My Gopis were crying. You, you should not speak such heartbreaking words to us. And they tried to persuade Krishna to accept them. Krishna had every intention of accepting them, but he was just playing. Why? Because he thought, do you remember on that day when you were bathing in the Jamuna? At that time, I stole your clothes and climbed a tree. And then I told you, come out from the water. And one by one, because they were hiding behind each other. <laughs> one by one, come here and I'll give you your cloth. So Krishna was thinking, on that day, I saw everything on the outside. But I didn't see everything on the inside. You are hiding your love. Hmm? So today, I want to see everything on the inside. Make you open, reveal your feelings. And this is why Sri Krishna was teasing them. And acting as if he was indifferent. So, Radhika, a heart breaking and becoming maddened with love. She said, Sinchanga nasta dararam riktapura keina. Oh, Sri Krishna, oh Anga, Sinjanga. Anga means limb. That means a friend who is so close to you as if they're like your own body. You can say Anga. Hmm? Sangu Anga Stpashadam. Hmm? So Radhika said, oh Anga. Sincha, extinguish. Sincha. It's in the imperative and the first word of the verse. So there's extreme emphasis. Extinguish. What? Hasava Loka Kalagita Charit Chagnam. Extinguish the fire of calm desire in my heart that you yourself have awakened by playing your flute and by your smile and by your loving glance. Because you spoke to us about Dharma, that we should follow Dharma. But if a person by accident sets a fire in someone's house, hmm, then what is the Dharma? What should they do? They should not let the house burn down. They have to put out that fire because they are responsible for that. So you are responsible for lighting a fire of desire in my heart. Deliberately you did it. By your glances, by your smiling, by your flute playing. Deliberately. And so now, if you want to teach us Dharma, why don't you follow Dharma by putting out this fire? So this fire cannot be put out by only a drop of water. It needs Purakena, it needs tsunami, a flood. And not of water, but a flood of Amrita nectar. Chris is the flood of nectar? Hey Bhagavan, where will we get a flood of nectar from? Hmm? You know, four incarnations were there. Karuna was underneath the Mangara mountain. Vishnu was on top of the mountain. Ajita was helping the demigods, pulling Vasuki the snake. And they churned the ocean and then another incarnation of Supreme Lord came. Danvantari and bought one pot of nectar. And then a fifth one, Mahini Mahati came and killed Rahu. Not killed, he just cut off his head. His head is still alive. <laughs> Tries to eat the sun and the moon every now and then. So, 
Five incarnations of the, of the Supreme Lord were involved in getting just one pot of nectar. Where will I, a Gopal, a coward boy, get a whole ocean of nectar? Radharani said, Sinchanga nastwa dadaramrita. There is an ocean of nectar in your lips. And if you will give us that ocean of nectar from your lips, then this fire can be put out. And Krishna, if you don't put out the fire in our hearts, then what will happen? No, Chedvayam Virajakyopiyukta Deha. The fire of separation will rise out of my heart and I will have spontaneous combustion. <laughs> Just like Sati. You know Sati? The wife of Lord Shiva. She went to the Daksha Yagya and she sat in meditation. And actually in separation from Lord Shiva, she burst into flames and gave up her life. So Radhika threatened Krishna. If you don't put out this fire with the nectar of your lips, then I will go into meditation on your lotus feet and burst into flames and give up this body. And then, you know, Krishna said in Gita, Yam Yam Vapismanam Bhavam Chajatyante Kalevram. Whatever you think about, at the time of death, you go there. So Radharani said, Dhyane na Yama Padio Padavim Sakete. So thinking of you when I give up this body, then I will go and I'll become dust in Vrindavan on the path. So that when you are walking, I'll get the touch of your lotus feet. Hmm? So, oh, Sake, oh my friend, is that what you want? If you are really my friend, why would you want to kill me? Why would you want to be responsible for the death of an innocent woman? And even if you decide to kill me, to get rid of me, I'm not going away anyway. Because by meditating at you at the time of death, somehow I will come and touch your feet. So Radharani spoke these beautiful words. Now, actually, the heroine should always be contrary. The heroine should not openly speak her desires. It will be Rasabas. Then how is it that Radharani is openly expressing? Hmm? Why? Because she, her bhav had gone so high into the state of Unmad. And in the state of Unmad, one loses all discrimination. So there was no Rasabas. It is an indicative of the intensity of her separation at that time. So Mahaprabhu taught this verse to Sanatan Goswami, he said, yes, it's true that at the time of separation, due to intense love, a devotee wants to give up his body. But that separation is so intense that Krishna will appear and save the devotee's life, then the devotee will not want to pass away. <laughs> so otherwise, to commit suicide is very tamasic. You cannot attain the goal of life by this. You can only attain the goal of life by nine types of bhakti. And out of nine types of bhakti, Taramadde Sarvashesta Nama Sankirtan now I am Atmara. Nira Parad Nam Lali Pai Premadan. Out of all the practices of bhakti, the best is Nam Sankirtan. If someone will chant the holy names of Sri Krishna. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. Without offense. Then brain will come. Everything. They, they will realize everything. So Mahapu gave this teaching to Sanatana Goswami. Mahapu said, when you surrendered to me, at that time, I accepted you. So your body belongs to me. You have no right to destroy it. Your body is no longer yours. It's mine. And I have many things I want to achieve through your body. Why? Bigra Pakash. The lost deities of Bhadranava there in Vrindavan. Who will go and discover them? Look the tears of Udhara. There are so many lost holy places. Bhakti Granta Pranayan. The scriptures must be composed revealing the essence of devotional service. And um, Sada Cha Stapana. 
Who will establish what is proper sadhacha, proper behavior for Vaishnavas in the various ashrams and stages of life and all the samskars and how to do puja and all of these things? Who will teach this? So Mahaprabhu said, because of the order of my mother Sachi, I have to stay here in Jagannath Puri. So I cannot do all these, uh, fulfill all these components of my mission in Vrindavan. So I will fulfill that through you. And then Mahaprabhu embraced Sanatana Goswami again. And Sanat Goswami's person came in the body of Mahaprabhu again. So, oh no! <laughs> so then Mahaprabhu went away. When Mahaprabhu went away, Haridas Tango said, You are so fortunate. Mahaprabhu has accepted you. You are his instrument for fulfilling his mission. So, because the Lord is Satya Sankalpa, that means, Satya Sankalpa, but whatever he wants becomes true. That means that you will also be a success in fulfilling all of these services. Srila Sanatan Goswami Pad. He said, I am not qualified at all. I am a dreadful, wretched person. I am simply making offense to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> Haridas Thakur said, no, you are so fortunate. He has accepted you. He is doing a mission through you. But I am useless. He has not given any mission to me. Srila <laughs> Sanatana Goswami said, oh Haridas! You are sitting here at Zidabakul, you are chanting 300,000 names of Krishna every day. Not 16 rounds. Not 64 rounds. Not 128 rounds. 192 rounds every day. 192 rounds, 300,000 names of Krishna. So he said, Mahaprabhu has come to teach the glories of the holy name to this world. And through you he is teaching the glories of the holy name, Haridas. So you are great. Why? Because some persons, they do sadhana. They practice their sadhana very nicely. But they don't preach and they don't help others. And there are others who preach, but they're not doing any sadhana. Hmm? So their preaching is not effective, actually. In fact, their preaching is not even bhakti, it's karma. Prachar, without achar, is just karma, a material activity. It is only for name and fame, for facility and luxury for oneself. Because if you are not doing sadhana, then you don't know Krishna. How can you do anything for Him? You have no interest in Him. Because you are averse to Him. Anyone who is not chanting 64 rounds daily, is a verse to Krishna. I am not saying Papa Bhakti Thakur said. The sign of being against Krishna is not completing one hundred thousand names daily. So Sanatana Goswami Pat said, But you, how are you? Achara Prachara Name Karaha Duikaya to me. Sarva Guru to me Jagatera Arya. Oh Haridas Thakur, your practice is perfect and your preaching is perfect. You do both. Name Kara Duikarya. There are two duties to the holy name. One duty is to chant the name, and the other duty is to preach about the name to others. So he said, Oh Haridas, you do both of these. Uh, duties to the name perfectly. Therefore, to me, Sarva Guru, you are the Guru of the whole world. To me, Jagatera Arya, you are the most worshipful person in the whole universe. So, in this way, Sanatana Goswami and Srila Haridas Thakur they were glorifying each other. The hot season came, and at that time, Gadada Pandit used to invite Mahaprabhu to take prasadam at the Yameshwar Thot. You know, there is the temple of Thot Gopinath. 
So before midday, Mahaprabhu went there, and then from there he thought, oh, told the servant, call Sanatan, Sanatan Goswami to come here. So then Sanatan Goswami heard the news, he was very happy, he got up from Siddhapur, and there are two ways that he can go to, to, to Gopinath. One way is on the path in front of the Singhadwara gate of Lord Jagannath, and the other way is longer and very difficult in the middle of the summer, in the hot sun where there's no shade, along the sand of the beach. <coughs> so, Sunatan Goswami came along the beach, walking in the hot sand, and I don't know if you know what it's like in Jagannath Puri in the summer, walking barefoot in the hot sand. It's like fire. But because he was thinking, I'm going to see Mahaprabhu, he didn't feel anything. <laughs> this is the nature of Rag. Rag attachment means that which makes that which would be painful turns it into pleasure if it affords one a chance to serve the Supreme Lord. So because he was so eager to see Mahaprabhu, he was walking on the burning sand happily without noticing anything. When he arrived there, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had already taken prasadam and after prasadam then, Vaishnava was taking a little rest. So Mahaprabhu was already resting. But his, some servants were there, they gave Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's remnants to Sanatana Goswami. Happily, he took the Mahaprasad of Afterwards, when Mahaprabhu got up, then Mahaprabhu said, Oh Sanatana, which way did you come here? Sanatana Goswami Pad said, oh, I went along the beach. Mahaprabhu said, why did you walk on the hot beach in the hot sun? Why didn't you come on the path by the Singhadwara? Sanatana Goswami Pad said, The servants, the pandas, the servants of Lord Jagannath are always coming and going on that path. And if I were to go there and touch them, then I would be ruined. He had so much respect for the servants of Lord Jagannath, considering himself so contaminated that he would touch them on their way to service. Then they would have to go and take a bath and they would be late for their service. So they could not go there. So then Mahaprabhu said, The great demigods like Brahma and Shiva and all the saints and rishis become purified by touching you, Sanatana. But you yourself are so humble that you consider yourself to be untouchable for the servants of Lord Jagannath. So you do the Maryada Palana. You observe all etiquette very strictly. So Mahaprabhu said, Maryada Palana Sadhura Bhushana. The observance of etiquette is the ornament of a sadhu. Hmm? Sadhu doesn't wear gold earrings and necklaces and everything. What is the ornament of the sadhu? Etiquette. Respecting seniors. Hmm? Following all the rules and regulations of polite Vaishnav society. Even under pressure, even when there are difficulties. Always defer to seniors. Take the humble position. Put others first. So Mahaprabhu was very uh, pleased with Sanatana Goswami. He said, Ye Bhaja Se Bada Apakta Yina Cha Krishna Bhajane Nahi Jati Kula Di Bacha You have said that you are so fallen and everything. But I say, Ye Bhaja Se Bada those who are doing bhajan are great. And those who are not doing bhajan, abhakta hina cha, they are condemned and despicable. Hmm? Krishna bhajani nahi jati kula di vichara. In the service of Krishna, there is no consideration at all of caste, birth, the one's position in society, race, gender, or anything. 
It is everything is dependent only on seva vritti, the inspiration to serve. Who is serving more is greater. And Mapu was so pleased with it. Again, Mapu embraced him. And again, Sanamga said, like, "Oh no, my blood and pus is going on the body of Mapu. It's terrible." So then, after this, Sanatan Goswami went and he met with Jagannatha Pandit. So he said, Oh Jagannatha, I came here to Puri to make progress in my life, but I think I'm going backwards in the opposite direction because I'm just making offenses. What should I do? Jagannatha said, you cannot go in the Jagannath temple to see Lord Jagannath. So you should wait for the Ratiyatra festival. In the Ratiyatra festival you have Lord Jagannath's darshan. And then you will have fulfilled your purposes in coming here by having darshan of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, in the form of Mahaprabhu and in the form of Lord Jagannath. And because Mahaprabhu has told you you have to fulfill his missions in Vrindavan, once you've seen Lord Jagannath, then if you go to Vrindavan, then you not have this problem of uh, uh, Mahaprabhu embracing you all the time. So then Sanatana Goswami said, yes, you are very wise. You have given me good advice. So then he was staying in Siddhabhaku. After some time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there to Siddhabhaku. And seeing Sanatana Goswami, he went to embrace him, but Sanatana Goswami was running away. But as you know, Ajahnulam Mitabhujo Kanatavadato Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has very long arms. Ajahnulam Mitabhujo means long arms reaching down to his knees. And, and he's very tall also. So those who Namka Swami tried to run away, Mahaprabhu caught with his long arms. That's what these long arms are. <laughs> and he caught him. And he embraced him again. And Sanatana Swami was horrified. Oh no. Please, I am contaminated. I am disgusting. <laughs> Mahabhu said, No. I am touch you just to purify myself. You are seeing your body in a material way, in the bodily conception of life. But you should know that Vaishnava Thakur Aprakrita Sada Nitya Chidananda Mai the body of a Vaishnava is Aprakrita, supernatural, transcendental, Sachidananda. Hmm? So your body is transcendental. And anyway, I am a sannyasi. And the sannyasi has to see everything equally. Hmm? If I don't see everything equally, I will be at fault. Why? Dvaiti Bhattar Bhattar Gyan Sabamano Dham E Bala E Manda E Sababram the dualities of this world, thinking this is good and this is bad. This is only Manodharma, the religion of the mind. To say this is good and this is bad is all Brahman. Hmm? All illusion. Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, Mahabhu said to Sanatana Goswami, Vidya Vinaya Sampane Brahmani Gavi Hastini Suni Chava Swapakacha Pandita Samadashina a pundit is a person who sees a cow, an elephant, a dog, a dog eater, and a high caste Brahmin who has all vidya and vinay, gentleness and knowledge. Vidya dadati vinaya. That's the sign of knowledge. Vidya makes you gentle. If someone is rough, prickly, and difficult, they have no knowledge. Knowledge makes one very gentle. So, so if you, there is a Brahmin who is very qualified like that, or even a dog, or a dog-eating outcast, the pandit, a learning person, sees them all equally. So, Krishna has sent you here to test me. And if I discriminated against you, I embrace this one, but not this one. Then I would go against my sannyas dharma of being above dualities. Haridas Thakur said, My Lord, you are not telling the whole story. 
You're only speaking externally. You're just speaking externally. The real reason why you embrace us is because you are Pajit Bhavan. You are causelessly merciful. And you extend your mercy to fallen persons. Mahaprabhu said, I will tell you the truth. Actually, in Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, Matyo yada chakta somasta karma nivedi tatma vichi kirshato me tadamre tatvam patipadya mano mamatma bhuyaya chakalpa tevai Krishna's teachings to Uddha in the 11th canto. There Krishna says that if a person has given up all karma, all reward-seeking activities, fruitive activities, though they're in this world of birth and death, but they left all karma, nivedi-tatma, and they surrendered to me, me, then I desire to make them special. By my potency, those who are surrendered to me, I make them Amrita, immortal. That means I give them spiritual body. Hmm? And they become qualified to join me and my associates. They become amongst my transcendental paraphernalia. They accept it. So Mahaprabhu explained this verse of Srimad Bhagavatam in very simple Bangla language. Diksha kale bhakta kare atma samarpan Sei kale krishna kare tare atma sam Sei deya kare tare chidananda moi Aprakrita deya tara charna bhajai Mahaprabhu said Diksha kale at the time of Diksha initiation Diksha kale bhakta kare atma samarpan At that time the devotee offers his heart fully to see Krishna in the form of Guru Dev. Atma Samarpan fully gives his heart. Say Kali Krishna Kari Tari Atma Sam. And when the disciple surrenders to Guru in this way, Krishna said, Oh, you are mine. And Krishna accepts that person, Atma Sam, like his own self, like his own family member. And at that moment, Say De Akari Tari Chidananda Mai. Krishna, by his mystical potency, makes that devotee's body Chidananda Moy. Now his body is spiritual. Everyone else says, oh, it looks like the same person. But this is material. Just like if you, you cook some food and you offer it to Krishna, ordinary person will say it's the same food. But someone with transcendental vision will say, ah, this is divine Mahaprasad. Satchidananda, full of all potencies. Loko Uttara Padatanam. Prabhava Kopkanagala, with astonishing powers. The person will realize it. So, in the same way, when the disciple surrenders to Sri Guru at the time of initiation, Gurudev offers him, and that devotee becomes Mahaprasad. Completely transcendental body. This is why you cannot go on the altar and directly do the services to the Satchitananda Vigra of Krishna before Diksha. Hmm? Because the Devo Deva Machayat, it is said in Shastra that without becoming a demigod, you cannot serve the demigods. Let's say, for example, you want to serve Indra. How can you serve Indra? First, you have to go to Indra Lok in a demigod body, then you can serve him. So in the same way, how can a person with a body made of the five material elements serve the body of Krishna, which is Satchitananda? It's impossible. Therefore, the devotee undergoes the process of Diksha, his body becomes transcendental, and then he can serve the vigor of Sri Krishna. Mm -hmm. So Mahapu said, Sanatan, your body is transcendental, not material. I embrace you 
to purify myself. Oh, Haridas and Sanatan, I see you too, like my little boys. So if a mother has a baby, and the baby passes stool and urine on the mother, she's not upset. Actually, she likes it. Because of the love. So in the same way, I like to embrace you. I never experienced that a bad smell is coming from your source. But to me, it smells like Chachu Sama. Do you know Chachu Sama? A oh, very fragrant paste, which is made of chanda, sandalwood paste, camphor, karpur, agur, oud, and kasturi, musk. Well, very, the most beautiful fragrances. Mm -hmm. All mixed together, Mahapu said, when I embrace you, then I smell Chachu Sama. Okay. So then Mahaprabhu again embraced Sanatana Goswami and when he embraced him then all of the sores immediately disappeared and his body became young and fresh and shining golden complexion Haridas Thakur was amazed he said oh Mahaprabhu this is your Lila now I understand everything. It was you who made him drink the contaminated water in the Jarakanda forest. It was you who made his body break out in sores just to test his personality, his character. And now it was you who have removed all of this. This is all your divine pastime. So, these are some of the astonishing glories of Sanatana Goswami Pada. After some time, after the Ratyatra, the residents of Bengal, they went back to Bengal. But Mahaprabhu told Sanatana Goswami, you stay with me for one year. So Sanatana Goswami stayed with him and after that, then he went to Vrindavan. So many pastimes of Srila Sanatan Goswami party in Vrindavan, you know that he discovered Madan Mohan. <laughs> but after discussing his life history, I want to conclude by saying a few words about his contribution. Mm -hmm. <laughs> His literary contribution. Srila Sunatana Goswami Pad in Hari Bhakti Vilas, he has established Vaishnav Sadhachar. How Vaishnavas should behave, how they should do puja, when they should shave, how they should put on tilak, tie their sikha, or everything. Brush the teeth, all aspects of devotional life practically have been described by Srila Sunatana Goswami Pad in Hari Bhakti Vilas. Actually, Gopal Bhatta Goswami compiled it and then Srila Sanatana Goswami wrote a commentary explaining it all. So, and especially Bhakti Granta Pranaya, Mahapu told him, compose books that reveal the path of Bhakti. So Srila Sanatana Goswami part is the Acharya of Sambandha Gyan. And the deity of Sambandha Gyan is Madan Mohan. So he discovered, he rediscovered Madan Mohan and he has taught Sambandha Gyan through especially his Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. So we pray to Madan Mohan. Jayatam Saratur Pangor Mama Manda Matirgati Matsarvasva Padam Bojo Radha Madana Mohanu O Mat Sisi Radha Madana Mohan I am lame and blind, I cannot move at all. But you are my life and soul. All oh, glories to you. The meaning is this. 
One cannot enter into bhakti unless he has turned away from the worldly pleasures. Kamdev, Cupid, the god of love, is always shooting everyone in the heart with his arrows and making their attachment. But Krishna is Madana Mohan. Who is so beautiful, he even bewilders Cupid if Cupid, no, if millions of Cupids will see Krishna. No, only smell him from far away, they will faint in ecstasy. Krishna is so beautiful. So if one will take shelter of Madan Mohan, who bewilders even Cupid, then the influence of Cupid will be eradicated from his heart. And he'll leave all attachments. And then he can engage in the process of sadhana to Govinda Dev. And then by that you will attain Prayojan, Radha Gopinath. So these are the three deities of Sambanda, Abhidha and Prayojan, Madan Mohan, Govinda Dev and Gopinath. So Srila Sanatana Swami Pad is the Acharya of Sambanda Gyan and he has established that in his Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. He has described there the different levels of bhakti. How Dhruva Maharaj, he is very Dhruv, fixed in his practice. But when he was doing his practice, he had some personal motivation. He wanted to get a kingdom greater than his grandfather. So he is a Sakam Bhakta, a devotee with ulterior motives. So he did not come within the category of Anyabilasta Shunyam, the definition of bhakti, which is free from ulterior motives. So better than him is Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj has no material desires at all. Hmm? But when Lord Nishingadev appeared, did Prahlad Maharaj offer him a glass of water? Something to eat? Massage? Fan? He didn't do anything. He did no service. Why? Because he's a Jnani Bhakta. He has devotion, but he has Jnan, full awareness of the opulence of the Lord. So my Lord is complete, perfect, self-satisfied. He doesn't need anything. He's not hungry, no need to feed him. He's not hot, no need to fan him. He's not thirsty, no need to give water. He's not tired, no need to give massage. Then what can you do? You can preach to the demon boys in the school. So Prahlad Maharaj was preaching to the demon boys. This was his service. So preaching is service, but more indirect. Hmm. Unless the devotee's bhav is very high and then he's glorifying the intimate service of the bridge vases, then also that katar, it's preaching, but the katar is a service and very pleasing to Radha and Krishna. Hmm. My Gurudev used to say, Pracha bhakti katakkar hai. That means that preaching is the belching of bhakti. Just like if you eat a meal, delicious meal, and you're completely full, then at the end of the meal you're so full and so satisfied and... Uh, it just comes out by itself automatically. A belch comes. So, this is preaching. If... You are chanting every day and realizing the sweetness of Krishna and relishing that and feeling very satisfied and inspired, then that joy overflows from your mouth and that is preaching. Mm -hmm. That has the power to change the lives of others and inspire them. That some, the fragrance of love for Krishna, very sweet. They'll be attracted like bumblebees to honey. So, Prachar Bhakti Kadakkar here, preaching is the belching of bhakti. If you are not chanting and not relishing bhakti, then no power at all. So, Prahlad Maharaj, he was preaching to the demon boys, but he didn't serve because, Lord Nishinadev directly because he is a Jnani Bhakta. So, Sanatika Swami part through these stories that he is presented in Brihad Bhagavatamrita, he has shown that better than Prahlad Maharaj is Ambarish Maharaj. Because Ambarish Maharaj is Savai Mana Krishna Padayananda Yoga Chang Savai Kunta Gunana Vanane 
करो हरि मंदिर माज ना विशुष सूतिम चक्रात आचु तत्सत कथोद्रे He is engaging all of his senses. He is mind in remembering the Lord. He is tongue in describing the Lord. His hands in cleaning the temple. His feet in going on parikrama. His ears in hearing. His head in bowing down. His nose in smelling the flowers offered to the Lord. His tongue in tasting the tosi offered to the Lord. His desires in fulfilling the desires of the pure devotees. So he is fully engaged. His eyes in seeing the deity of the Lord. His, all his senses are engaged. So Ambrish Maharaj is better. But Sunan so Goswami part has shown how Hanuman is superior to Ambrish. Because Ambrish Maharaj, he is in his sadhak form. When he, he goes to the spiritual world to serve Krishna, he won't be Ambrish Maharaj in the spiritual world. Ambrish Maharaj is his sadhak form here. Yeah, that's not his spiritual form. But Hanuman, his form is that's who he is in the spiritual world and here. He comes backwards and forwards. So he is a Siddha. He is a Premi Bhakta. Ambrish Maharaj is Shuddha Bhakta. Then Hanuman is Premi Bhakta. But better than Hanuman is the Pandavas. Yes, yes. Because Arjuna and Krishna, they are such close friends, they can lie down and sleep together on the same bed. Take prasadam hmm? and then lie down together. Can Hanuman lie on the same bed as Lord Ram? Not possible. Impossible. <laughs> so, Arjuna and the Pandavas, they are superior to Hanuman. But superior to the Pandavas. When Krishna was in Mathura, and he wanted to send a message to Vrindavan. He needed to send a messenger who would be really, really understand his heart and convey his message to the Prajagopis. A very qualified person. Didn't send Yudhishthira Maharaj, did he? Who did he send? Uddhav! But Uddho Shuddho Ho Gayo Prajagopim Ki Bo Jnana Pajai Dub Dugi Baja Prema Kado Jai Jai Shri Radhe But when Uddhav went to Vrindavan, then he realized, Ah, I thought that I was the greatest devotee, but now I discover I know it. The bridge buses are far, far superior to me. And among them, Simati Radhika is supreme. So Srila Sanatana Goswami Pari in Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, he's shown the stages of bhakti. Why? So that you can decide what do you want? What do you want? Do you want a bhakti like Prahlad? Do you want bhakti like Hanuman? Do you want back do you want to that Krishna will drive your chariot like Arjun? No. Do you want to be a very close and intimate confidential friend like Uddhav? No. Do you want to take care and do lal and pal and pamper and love and caress cute and beautiful balagopal? No! What? <laughs> but he's so sweet! <laughs> yes, so it... But why are you saying no? Only because of the mercy of Sanatan Goswami. Because Sanatan Goswami has presented this kata and it has become down in our Guru Parampara and by hearing this, you have rejected all of these very high goals of life. So Sanatan Goswami Pad has given us Sambandaka to be fixed in one Sambanda relationship to Radha and Krishna. Radha Dasya. In Brihad Bhagavatamrita, Srila Sanatana Goswami Pada has especially glorified. He has especially glorified the power of Sadhu Sangha. He told the story of one Matu Brahman named Jana Sharma. And Jana Sharma is hearing from his guru. And his guru is actually a cowherd boy. Associate of Krishna who has appeared in this world named uh, Swarup or Gopkumar. And Gop 
I was thinking, what kata will I tell to this Matu brother? And he thought, the best kata I can tell him is my own life history. How I went to Goloka Brandava. How? Gok Kumar was a simple boy living in Braj. And one day he met a very great guru. And that guru was very merciful to him. And gave him Diksha Mantra, Gopal Mantra. And when the guru spoke that mantra, he was in so much ecstasy, he fainted. Gokumar thought of good ever sleep. I'll go and get some water, cool, refreshing water from the Jamuna and revive him. He went, but when he came back, his guru was gone. Where did he go? Anyway, he gave me mantra. I should remember this mantra. So then every day he was remembering Gopal mantra. He was very attached to that. But he didn't know exactly how to remember it. He did not know what is my Sambandha Gyan, how to meditate on the meaning of each word, Mantra to Chintan, the Ishta Dev, and all of these things. He only had the Mantra. But still, Gokumar, being attached to the Mantra given by Guru, that Mantra took him through all the levels of the universe. And eventually he arrived in Goloka Vrindavan. So by this kata, Srila Sanatana Goswami Pad has spoken about the nature of mantra. Om Tat Sat. Mantra is Swatta Siddhaha. Self-manifesting. It does not depend on the power of your mind, intelligence or speculation. The mantra given by Gurudev is alive. It is Krishna Himself. And if someone just with great honor Every day, you remember his Diksha Mantras with the proper rules and regulations at the right time, every day. Gradually, gradually, his Sambandha Gyan and relation with Krishna, everything will manifest. So have the very deep, deep honor for your Diksha Mantras. Never, never neglect Diksha Mantras. It is a great offense. So, Gokumar was telling me this his own history to the Matu Brahman. But the Matu Brahman was listening and listening and he had like a look on his face. He didn't really understand everything. So then, Gokumar was feeling very compassionate to him. And he just put his hand on his head and blessed him. And there then, by the blessing of his Guru Dev, Janashama <laughs> felt himself blasting through all the coverings of the universe and the next moment he saw he was in his spiritual body in Galoka Brandavan and his Guru was there in his spiritual body two of them were together in their swaroops in Krishna's Leela <laughs> in a moment so mm, Sanatana Swami Pada has written Mahat Sangha Mahat Myam Evaitat Paramad Bhutam Kritarta yena vi praso sadyo bhutat surupavat. Hmm? Mahat sangha mahatmyam. What is the mahatmya? The glory of mahat sangha, the association of a pure Vaishnava. Evaitat paramad bhutam. It is param adbhut. It is amazing. Adhubhut means astonishing, indescribable. It is beyond the uh, intelligence. It is beyond our imagination. It is beyond even the statements of scripture. Scripture cannot reach to the extent of the glories of Sadhu Sangha. It is Adhubhut. And among those Adhubhut things that cannot be described, it is Paramadhubhut. So Mahat Sangha, Mahat Mnam, Evaitad Paramad Bhutam. Why? Kritata Yena Vipra. So that Vipra, Janashama, that Brahmin, Kritata. He became perfect. Even he did not do any sadhan. But he became perfect. Sadyo Bhutat Swarupabhat. Immediately he attained a spiritual form just like his Gurudev Swarup. So this is the power of Sadhu Sangha. Hmm? I can hear in your heart, some of you are whispering. This is not how can it be? Some doubts are there. So give your doubts to me. Thank you. I will execute them.
Give up all doubts. All doubts. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastri Koi, Lava Matta Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. In a moment's association, one can attain all perfection. This is that moment described here. When Sarup blessed his disciple Jana Shaman. Sarva Siddhi Hoi, Lava Matta, in a moment. So when mm, the, he arrived in Goloka Pandama, he saw Krishna's Leela was going on. Hmm? So beautiful. How is Krishna's Leela going on there? Sanatana Goswami part is described. In the evening time, the sky becomes full of dust because Krishna is coming back with all the cows. From Gochan and Lila, it comes back to the village. Nanda and Yashoda and Rohini, the parents, they were all feeling so much separation, but now he came back. Mother Yashoda embraces Krishna and bathes him in tears of love and milk flowing from her breast. Oh, Krishna, come on. You should have a, a bath and get ready and take prasadam with your father. So then Mother Yashoda comes, brings Krishna into the house. The servants have prepared the warm, fragrant water and all the things ready for Krishna's bath. And then Madhya Shoda, she starts, she begins to uh, bathe Krishna, but then she sees some manjaris, some maid servants of Radhika have come there. And she thinks, I am busy, I have things to do in the kitchen. And because she feels like her son, even though he's become Kishore, but in her heart, he's still like a baby. Due to the intensity of love, she feels he's still like a baby. So she tells those manjaris of Radhika, Oh, I am busy, I have things to do. You can do his massage and baby. And then she goes in the kitchen. So then the maid servants, they're pouring the water on, they're massaging Krishna with oil, pouring the water like this. So while they're massaging him, they're massaging very softly and very nicely, very beautifully. But Krishna, as a joke, he's going, ow, ooh, ow. Mati Shoda puts her head out from the kitchen, oh, what are you doing to my son? <laughs> and then Krishna's laughing. <laughs> so when Krishna's bathing and decorating is all done, Mati says, come on, your father's waiting for you, don't keep him waiting. And Krishna comes and he sits down. The servants are serving prasad. Madhya says, oh, you give some, serve some puris to Krishna. No, 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 no. She's very shy. No, no, take it. She gives a tray of puris. And Radharani is going along the line. Give, and as she's getting closer to Krishna, her hands are trembling more and more. She drops the whole tray and runs away, embarrassed. So Radharani herself had cooked a very, very beautiful sweet Manuhar Ladu. Enchanting Ladu. Very all her love and feeling she had put into this preparation. And she wanted to see how Krishna will enjoy it. So many people are there. Madhya Shoda, Nanda Maharaj, Rahini, Madhu Mangal, Balaram. Radhika is there in one place, Chandravali is somewhere else. So Krishna, he sees that Manuhar Ladu and takes it. And Radharani is watching. How will he like it? And Krishna goes, Ugh. At that very moment, Madhya Shoda is, what is this? What did someone put in my son's food? And she becomes very concerned. At the same moment, the maid servants of Radha, Radharani herself is, oh, What did you do? And all the maid servants becoming anxiety, seeing the anxiety of Radharani. At the same time, Chandravali and Asaki is, Oh, yes! Good! She made a mistake and she's. That shows how Chandravali is the best. <laughs> Madhu Mangal is laughing because he knows that Krishna is only joking. So in this way, all different emotions, all types of ecstatic love are manifest in just one moment. Afterwards Krishna got up and left and Radharani came, what did I do? Let, let me taste and see what I did wrong. And then she tasted. Oh. 
and it was nectar. Why? Because Krishna wanted to bite it and then leave it, knowing that Radhika would come and taste his remnants. So Srila Sanatana Goswami Pai, he has revealed so many glimpses into the beautiful nectar of the pastimes of Radha and Krishna in Golok Vrindavan. And at the end of Sri Briyad Bhagavatamrita, there he has given Bhakti Rasayana. Rasayana means a tonic. If you are sick, the doctor gives you medicine and you become cured of that sickness. But when you are cured, you still don't have full strength yet. You have to recuperate, be rehabilitated. So at that time, you have to take an Ayurvedic tonic. So the tonic that revives the person who has overcome the disease but didn't become strong yet, that is called the Rasayana. So at the end of Priyat Bhagavatam Rita, Sri Sanatana Goswami Pad has given the Bhakti Rasayana. It is a collection of verses, a few verses from Brahma Sanghita and then it's all verses from Srimad Bhagavatam. Verses of Venu Gita, Yugal Gita, verses describing the trees, the forest of Brandava, the cows, the birds, the deer. Gradually it goes up step by step. The love of the coward boys, the love of Nanda Maharaj, the love of Yashoda, the love of the gopis, and up and up to the love of Radharani, and the love of Krishna for the gopis and Radharani. So the verses of Bhagavatam are arranged in a beautiful way that this is a Rasayana. That means the devotee who has, is, has become free from the bodily conception of life, from the lower consciousness, but he is not fully advanced yet. He has not fully attained Krishna uh, Prem. So for him a Rasayan is necessary. And so this Bhakti Rasayan shows the original method of bhajan presented by our six plus ones. The original method of bhajan was not like dungeons and dragons hmm? where you have like a, a board with a map of all the rooms in Nandagaon and Varsana and everything and you project yourself and going in this corridor and then in this room. This is not trying to artificially project yourself. No, the method of bhajan, original method of bhajan of, of our Goswamis is first follow Sanatan Goswami, the Acharya of Sambandhya, and drink this Bhakti Rasayan. Each verse reveals one Leela Pit, that is called Mantru Mai Upasana Leela Pit. It reveals one moment, one location, one set of pastimes, one mood. And if you chant the holy names and then stop and then recite that verse and meditate on the meaning of each word. And Srila Sanatana Goswami has given Dig Darshanitika commentary which draws out the nectar in each and every word and syllable of those verses to help us engage in this mantra mai upasana. So by sinking into one verse of Srimad Bhagavatam while chanting the holy name, that verse will manifest in the heart a moment of Krishna Lila. And now you have a flower. And as you go through each verse, you receive the transcendental flowers of each Lila. So this is Mantrupasna Mai Lila. And as one advances in chanting the holy name, then those Lilas will all come together in a flow and Mantrupasna Mai Lila will turn into Swarasiki Lila. That is Astakaliya Lila Smarana. So you cannot artificially go directly to Astakaliya Lila Smarana. Follow Srila Sanatan Goswami Pad. Drink this Bhakti Rasaya. Enter into Mantrupasna Mai Lila. And then gradually the Swarasiki Lila will manifest. This is the real path of Bhajan. This is the nectar that Mahaprabhu wanted to give, that he's given through Srila Sanatana Goswami. So we are most fortunate to be in his line and to hear his glories and teachings on this his divine disappearance day. Srila Sanatana Goswami Padaki Jai 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 Jai